Is that recording? And Don is going to need to unmute. Okay. There we go. Thank you. So we'd like to introduce Don Ware from, I think, Missouri. Is that right, Don? That's right. Warsaw, Missouri. Okay. And Don is, uh, is, uh, got saved, uh, later on in life and has been to the fast track to learn how to, to, uh, be in the ministry to hit in the healing ministry and to do what Jesus did and greater things shall we do. So we'd like to turn it over to Don. Don, please share some secrets and share what God has shown you. And so we can, we can also learn how to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Praise God. Yeah. I mean, you know, really it's so simple that, uh, you know, uh, you can't, the Bible says you can't do nothing on your own. And that's so true. You got to receive the anointing. And the way I want to share this with you is, is, uh, you know, I, I was raised here in Kansas City in Armadale District, and it's a terrible, terrible place. Uh, you know, you had to run home from school and run to school because the gangs would get you. <laughs> and uh, so I joined the Marine Corps, put four years in there and two years in Japan. And uh, I got back to the United States and kissed Treasure Island and said, I'll never leave you again. <laughs> because I'm telling you what, it's not nice over there. And... Uh, Anyway, I was stationed at Camp Pendleton, and I met my wife in San Diego, and uh, we've been married 58 years, and, you know, we got with five kids, and, uh, you know, uh, she was a, a Baptist, well, I should say a, a Pentecostal uh, preacher's daughter, <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a fancy free, right? I just got back into town, and, you know, anyway. Uh, we got married, and uh, you know I'm I'm out there in Oceanside, California, and I was out there for ten years after I got out of the Marine Corps, and uh, was selling Volkswagens and Chevrolets out there, and had a fabulous living, but you know it just wasn't right. So uh, I moved uh, my whole family back to Kansas City, where I'm from, and uh, again, uh, you know we found a house here, and uh, we we did did pretty well, but you know, I uh, tried selling cars here and they don't buy car Volkswagens back here at all. So I had to do something else. But to, to bring this to a head, you know, uh, I, I just, there's always been, you know, I didn't know if there was a God or wasn't a God. I was agnostic, you know, and I can remember, you know, even when overseas, I'd look up the stars and say, you know, who put all that stuff here, man? You know what I mean? I know I didn't do it, or my relatives didn't do it. Who did that? Somebody had to do it. And but but still, I you know couldn't uh, couldn't put it together. Well, uh, I started a company in Kansas City. We built stars and alternators, and uh, I, within three years, it was a, a million dollar company. And I was doing very good. I had my own airplane. I flew it. I had a ranch uh, at 465 acres and three houses on it doing real well you know but still there was an emptiness there and uh, this was in right here in, in Missouri and uh, I'm telling you uh, I had a nice home and you know I just wasn't happy you know well along came Japan <laughs> Japan started pouring stars and all ladies into this country. I mean, they, they tore us up. And, uh, you know, I was, I employed a hundred people and man, and I had all kinds of, uh, uh, businesses in, in uh, St. Louis that I deliver stars and all ladies to and warehouses and so forth. You know, uh, I just, I couldn't compete with them. So, uh, Eventually, uh, you know, I just, I really had it bad. And one day I was coming home uh, from a sales job to Osceola where I live. And this road is a real curvy road. And it's just before dark. And I, this, this, the Lord does strange things because I was going around this, these curves and this motorcycle zipped by me, boom. And then this diesel went by me. 
I said, my gosh, man, these people don't know what they're doing. There's lots of bad road here. Well, I got just a little ways down the road and all of a sudden I seen fire in the sky, it looked like. Well, what happened? What really happened is the, the motorcycle was gonna turn left at a, at a midnight junction, if you wanna say. Uh, and he seen the diesel behind him and he give us a gun and try to get over right. The diesel hit him, hit him so hard, it, it bent the bumper. I mean, the bumper is, you know, a foot and a half high. Uh, and uh, he went, he was on that motorcycle, he went under the wheels and it was loaded. And I, you know, I thought it was a fire because all the dust. And uh, again, uh, you know, I'm, I, don't, I don't know the Lord. You know, I, I just, I'm still pondering. And uh, I was the first one there. And I, I looked down at this man and this kid, redheaded kid, and uh, he was no more than three feet away from me. He's still on the motorcycle. His head was flattened. Uh, his, uh, he was still on the motorcycle, and his leg was over there uh, about 10 feet away. And, you know, I've been in the Marine Corps. I've seen corpse before, but, boy, this, this took a cake. I mean, I just, you know, and it, it tore me up, you know, and here the driver of the, of the diesel was running back and forth on foot. Man, man I killed him, I killed him. Well, yeah, he's dead, man. And uh, I stood there and, you know, what is life, man? This was a 19 year old kid. And, you know, did he want to die that way? Absolutely not. Did his parents want him to die that way? Absolutely not. And I got, I got sick and barfed up, you know, and, and uh, man, I, you know, what is life? I'm asking myself, you know, this is crazy. Why would this young young man die like this? I mean, you know, and the truck driver, he didn't want him to die. Nobody wanted him to die like that. And uh, the next truck that pulled up, car, excuse me, behind me, happened to be, now this, you know, there's no coincidence in this deal. Uh, he was my truck driver that drove my truck on the road to deliver these stars and all laters. And then the next one was a customer of mine in Kansas City. Now, tell me, you know, this, this lonely road out there, what's the chances of that? And I went down, I'm telling you, I went down the uh, road left, got down there a couple miles, stopped and barfed again. And I'm weeping, you know, what, what, is, what is life, man? This is nuts, crazy. And uh, I got home and uh, I was sick. And I was telling the wife about it, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, Man, all I could see was that young man down there on that motorcycle, flattened out like he was. And uh, I'm I just something inside me. I right then I was ready to join uh, the National Guard or whatever, anything that come along, because I was sick of everything. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, my business was failing, and I just you know, uh, it was just a horrible time. And along came. Uh, a preacher. I've been there for several years and he'd never come by there, but he came in and he wanted to talk to me. He had no idea what I'd seen or what I'd done. And uh, so uh, the secretary got a hold of me and I said, well, send him in. So uh, he came in and, you know, uh, I shared with him what I saw and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, man, I, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm still tore up on this. I don't understand, you know, what, what, what's life, you know? And man, I'm telling you what, I just, uh, I was ready to do something. Didn't know what, but do something. Well, he says, can I take you to lunch? I said, well, sure, you know. So he took me to lunch and, and right there in Osceola and, and we're sitting there and he's spitting all kind of, of, of scripture to me. And honestly, I'm not understanding hardly any of it because it's thousand and thousand and all that, you know? And, I, I, you know, what have I got to do here? You know, I mean, I, I want to join, you know, what I sign a piece of paper, or what we cut blood or what, I don't know. I don't have no idea what the contract is. I want to, I want to be a Christian. Well, I, I'm a man, you know, 45 years old and, you know, I'm not going to blur it, blur it out. So uh, anyway, we got through eating and he, I, we went back to the airport where my business was. And I'm all nervous inside, and 
And uh, he says, well, uh, can we do it tomorrow? Can we? Can I take you? My heart, well, why not today? Let's do something today. I didn't say that, but in my heart, it was. You know what I mean? So the next day come, and he uh, uh, came, and we went to get something to eat again. And again, my insides are quaking, you know. And I'm a man, man. I'm not going to show none of this. You know what I mean? And again, he starts spitting all kinds of scripture to me. And it's, it's meaningless to me, you know. I'm ready to do something. Sign me up. You know what I mean? What am I going to do? And uh, so we're coming back, uh, back, you know, from the airport. I, I'm starting to get mad inside because, you know, what am I going to do to, you know, to, to join this outfit? I mean, I, you know, no idea whatsoever. So I pull into the parking lot, my pickup, he's on the right hand side, and he's still blurting out scripture. And then directly says, well, would you like to meet the Lord? I said, well, well yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. And uh, he says, well, I'm going to lead you in the sinner's prayer. Well, you know, I said, great, let's, let's do it. So he started, and, and I repeat after him, and I'm telling you, folks, I didn't get four words out of my mouth before all of a sudden I felt I was lifted off the seat. And I'm telling you what, there's something happened on me I could feel inside that I never felt before. I did a lot of drinking, folks, but I'd never had a high like this one. And uh, I knew something was happening to me. And I began to weep and cry. And uh, man, you know, uh, I didn't have to sign nothing, you know, just <laughs> raise my hand and Lord, you know. And we got through there. And I walked in the, the office and I got two secretaries there. And I turned my head this way so they wouldn't see me crying. And I went into my office. And uh, man, my life changed right there. I mean, I just, that's how I met the Lord through a tragedy like that. And uh, I went to, I went to this, this gentleman's church and I went there and I grew and grew and, and uh, I was excited about that. And I lost my business because business just, I mean, absolutely cut a pulse. I mean, you know, the Japanese put, put me, put us down as he did many, 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 many companies. So. I moved back to Kansas City, and a little old garage there, uh, uh, and a little car lot, and uh, on a shoestring. Folks, I'm here to tell you, uh, that was a, one of the greatest things, the greatest move I ever made. I went to Belton Assembly Church up there in Belton, and uh, they were sending, they were going down to, uh, 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 down to Florida. They had that. Uh, uh, Brownsville going on and I didn't know nothing about that but I heard that you know that they were going and I wanted to go because you know I've been there I prayed for people I ain't seen nobody heal they say oh I feel better but you know what they wasn't healed and and I just man there's, I know there's more and I want it and I'm really getting hungry so if I'm going I, you know if I got to drive my own self down there so there's 13 of us went down there, and we got down there, and I'm standing in line. Let me tell you, folks, 7 o'clock in the morning, they're standing in line waiting to get in for 7 o'clock service that night. And standing out there in the rain, standing out there in the heat, and they got people, I mean, there's, you know, four or five, four or five, six thousand people, you know what I mean? And you can't see the end of the line, they're five and six deep, and people are being baptized in the Holy Spirit uh, in that line. And uh, people being saved, people being healed. And I said, my God, you know, I, I just, I, I've been to a lot of churches. I ain't never seen nothing like this, you know. And you could feel something, you know, I mean, inside of you just you're tearing you down, tearing you up. And finally we got in. And I sat well, up the balcony. And, uh, man, I'm hearing testimonies that just blow your mind. And I'm going to share this one where there's many. But uh, they've been there. Uh, uh, several weeks before, they were in a bus, okay, and they were going home, and they were praising the Lord, worshiping, the Lord, and the bus lifted up off the ground and went into a pastor. And uh, you know, if one or two people would have said that, I'd have said, yeah, well, yeah, okay, all right. But no, there was a bunch of them said the same thing, and they were all laid out in this field, 
praising the Lord. The police came, and when they came, they stepped out in the field and they fell down and went to praising the Lord. And things like that, I mean, just blew me. I mean, uh, I mean, wow, man, I want to be part of this. What do I got to do? You know, well, uh, I had the, the big boys pray for me and nothing. I mean, you know, I mean, I didn't feel no different. However, there was a bunch of people just fall down and I never fell. You know, I thought, well, I, Lord, I don't know if you don't love me or what. I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, we, we left. And I said, you know what? I'm going back. So I went back by myself, man. I drove that 1,200 miles and went back and went through the whole process again, standing outside. And, and uh, I, man, whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. And so I did. And I went back. And I, each time I would talk to somebody else. And uh, it was either the second or third time I went there. I, I sat next to these two elderly ladies. I don't like to say old ladies, but elderly ladies, you know, in their 80s. And uh, they were there when this broke out on Father's Day, okay? And I said, tell me, tell me what happened. You know, what brought this on? And she said, well, the evangelist came down and uh, he started praying for people. And all of a sudden, man. There's a fog over the top. I mean, the whole, whole sanctuary. And uh, he, she said, uh, you stick your hand up in there and you get, oh, you know, you feel really good. So these old, old lady, ladies stood up in the pew and put their head up in there. And the people lived there for three days. In other words, they didn't leave. And uh, man, you know, and she said that the fire, would, lightning would come down and it would hit in a pew and blow people plumb out of the pew in that area. And they wasn't even hurt. I said, my God, you know, I mean, what an awesome thing. I mean, hey, I, I'm now I'm really going. And uh, again, uh, I left. And uh, the next time I brought somebody with me. And they were astonished as well. And I said, you know what? I don't care what I got to do. I'm, 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 I'm in this, you know, whatever, whatever it takes, you know? <laughs> so I went back a total of six times. And the sixth time down there, I, I, I got prayed for again. And, and you know, I didn't, I didn't feel anything in particular, but I was going back. After that, back home, and I could feel a, a vibration, you know, just kind of a, in, inside of me. And it moved around. And I'm, what, what's this? What is this? Well, I went back to my church in Belton. I, I'm all excited about what's going on, you know, just seeing this. And they're, not, they're not too excited about it. Matter of fact, uh, I, got, I still got the letter of one of them there that uh, wrote me a letter and said, Don, uh, you know, you're going at this all wrong. You know, God is here right now. He's here just as he is down there. Think, yeah, but he's doing something down there, and he ain't doing nothing here. And anyway, the preacher overheard that. He, he really cornered me on it. And uh, I apologized, but I said, you know, it's the truth, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I for 90 days, folks, let me tell you, this dummy, uh, I'd go home, and I'd, I'd feel this. And you guys are going to feel some of this, too, I can tell you. That, that rubbing sensation inside, that vibration, you know what I mean? It feels good. It moves around all over, your, all over your body. And uh, for 90 days, I went through this. And, uh, Shirley, my wife, said, well, you know what? You got a brain aneurysm or you got something. I'm taking you to the doctor. I said, Shirley, how can it feel so good? I mean, I don't understand. You know? So 90 days later, see, it, it took all this time for me to understand. <clears throat> I was in the back, in the back of the church. We had about 350, 350 people there. And I, I just, I felt, wow. I, I just felt this again in my arms. And uh, anyway, I just felt like, well, I, you know, I go pray for people all the time. You know what I mean? I don't really see nothing happen, but. But I pray for him. 
but when I went down there, <clears throat> these two Spanish ladies were praying for another one. And uh, I just reached up and touched, wham, she went down. Well, you know what, that happens once or twice a month in this church, so it's no big deal. So when I turned around and looked, and her husband was in the second pew, and a uh, big, tall, lanky guy, and this, this is the second time they'd been there. And uh, I walked up to him, and I said, sir, can I pray for you? And he said, sure. So I reached up and began to pray. Bam! He went down. His head went over the back of the pew. I couldn't even see his head, man. I thought, I killed him. I killed him. My God, you know. And uh, I couldn't even see his head. He went over so far. I caught him on the second bounce, okay? I, I, I set him down in the pew. I walked back in my place in the back, and I said, Lord, I'm back here weeping. I said, Lord, I did. if I didn't kill him, I sure hurt him in a bad way, you know? And uh, about eight or ten minutes later, they both get up gloriously filled. I said, my God, you know, now, now I understand, Lord. I understand. And I began to pray for people for healing. And bam, bam, bam. It's a done deal. And, uh, you know, I was an idiot. I didn't know. But you know what? I finally found out. In that little place of business I was telling you, there's been over 3,000 people instantly healed there. And uh, I mean, it's, it's awesome. That little town of Belton, uh, I think we got 20,000 or what, something like that. They know, most of the businesses there know about the healings going on. And, and they send them there. And a lot of times I go to a restaurant and see somebody that's limping or in problem, uh, pray for them right there and they're healed. And, you know, I'm reading the Bible now. I'm really eating that sucker up, man. You know, I mean, come on. I want more. I want to know more about this. And uh, uh, I realized that in the, in, the, in the first century, man, man, they did great and mighty things. And, uh, you know, you don't see great and mighty things except down there. You know what I mean? We need to see them up here. And I also heard other people down there telling about uh, they received this gift and run off. And their church is in a full-blown revival and so forth. And man, my church wasn't interested in it, you know. Matter of fact, be honest with you, I got a gentle kick out of that church because I didn't know it, but they were getting ready to have a split in that church because of, of what I was doing. And uh, I, uh, what really brought it about is uh, I felt in, I'm in the back and the Lord put in my heart to go pray for this, this lady over here, way over there. And I'm looking at her, oh no, no, they don't, they don't, they don't want this. And then uh, I got another inkling, and oh no, no, no! They had, believe it or not, they had three team members, three, three, and three were praying for people, and that, that's what their job was. And there was never anybody healed that way, you know what I mean? And I couldn't figure out, well, why don't they, you know, let me pray for people, you know? And uh, anyway, the third time I said, no, I'm going. I went down there and I called her out. And the, the, the teams are still praying for people, and you know they're praying for them, and they're going back to their seat. Well, I asked this lady, "If can I pray for you?" She said, "Well, sure." I touched her. Bam! She went down. And that on the on that whole wing there, that whole wing, there was about eight women, and and I said, "Come down and just touch her. Just touch her on the forehead, and you shall receive." And she had bodies laying all around her. I mean. They all fell in the spirit. And, uh, well, when that was over, man, they gave me the, I mean, I, that was it. You know, I disrupted the whole service. <laughs> and that's when I made up my mind. I got to get out of here, man. You know what I mean? And I did. And uh, that's what shoved, you know, I mean, got me in the ministry. And, you know, I'm I'm very, I mean, I, I, I grab a whole that Bible, man. I read that. I mean, I read it and I live it. And uh, please understand that, you know, you can read this Bible all you want but until you act upon what it says, you've done nothing. And uh, I, I see so that happens so many people. And you know what? We need to become the word of God, not just read it. And, uh, you know, there's no end to what the Lord can do for us. I mean, no end. Uh, until he takes us home, you have no idea. And he, he talks about in Ephesians, you know, He'll do more than you can ever think or imagine if you just follow him. 
and uh, you know, since then I, I go to a lot of churches uh, until uh, this fungus among us came and uh, people, uh, well, 25 people are healed, just bam, just like that, you know, and praise God, it's, it's certainly not me. I'm not the healer and I tell them, please don't <laughs> introduce me as a healer. <clears throat> All I do is work for the healer that he already paid for. And I'm just the extension cord. And uh, so I go to a lot of churches, or did, and uh, I'm now doing, uh, we put all, most of these on Facebook. So if you go to Don Ware Facebook, you'll, you'll find a lot of these people. They throw their glasses away, you know what I mean? And uh, cancer's gone. And I mean, man, let me tell you, they ain't nothing too big for the Lord, but it's his anointing that does it through us. And, uh, you know, we got to, uh, you know, he's brought me along uh, just to the point where, you know, I think, well, I guess this is it. No, there's more. There's a lot more. And as long as I keep, uh, you know, like, blessed be the man that thirsts and hunger for righteousness, he'll be, he'll be filled. Well, you know what? That feeling continues. The more you pour out of yourself, the Lord, the more he's going to put in you. And, you know, the Bible says, you know, lift up your brother and sister and you shall also be lifted. I don't even pray for myself no more. I pray for other people. And I just, you know, I'm excited. And I didn't go to college for this. I, You know, the college I got was the Holy Spirit in this Bible right here. And uh, we, uh, uh, we do uh, full gospel. In fact, tomorrow night I'll be doing full gospel and I'll put that on Facebook. And we, I mean, we had some awesome times, let me tell you. And uh, we got uh, at least three new chapters coming in clo uh, close to here. And I'm excited about, look, folks, I'm 78 years old. I got no time to play. Uh, I played for a long time, even as a Christian. You know what I mean? I thought this is it. But once I receive that anointing, man, I'm going to tell you, I've, I've, even, I've even seen the dead rise. And if he can... If he can bring the dead back, he can sure take care of the live ones, and he will. But you know, it's through his power, through the Holy Spirit, that does it all. And uh, when I first received this anointing, I was reading the Bible, and you know, they laid hands on and they received, they received, and received. Well, when I first started praying for people to receive this anointing, it wasn't working. I said, Lord, I don't, I don't understand it. You know, here it is, right here. <laughs> you know. Uh, and anyway, I kept doing it. And and then about three or four years later, it, you know, then people started receiving it. I thought, okay, all right, Lord. Now I see people receive it on the on the phone. Uh, uh, I mean, wherever I happen to be or whatever. And and then they turn around and they pray for people and they're healed. And it, it's, I'll tell you what, it's, it's faster than a cold. It's immediate. Uh, it's a whole lot better than Ebola. And, you know, it's contagious. And being contagious, I'm telling you what, uh, I teach them, you know, this is not your anointing, it's his. And as long as you use it for his glory, for his people, he's going to pour more in. But you've got to give it away if you want to keep it. And, you know, uh, a lot of times you see the, some of the big guns, that, you know, it's theirs. And you also, they start out right, and they, they end up, uh, the anointing ain't, ain't quite strong because they're hanging on to it. And, you know, they got to give it away. And that's what they did in the first century. Don't we have to do that too? I mean, they ain't nothing changed. We've changed. So it took this dummy a long time to try to figure out, you know, what is going on and uh, how to do it. And now uh, a lot of churches I go to, uh, I'll ask for two or three Holy Ghost filled people and uh, I'll, I'll pray for them to receive this anointing. Then I let them pray for other people and they're healed just like that. And I teach them, I say, now you got to do the same thing. You got to grab hold of somebody that's Holy Ghost filled and, and go. And, and I'm going to tell you what, uh, I see, we do a radio program in Kansas City and we see people healed. On the radio. Uh, I mean, you know, I've, I've been doing this for two years, over two years now. And uh, 
you know, people call in and, well, I got this and I got that. I said, no, you don't. You don't have it no more. Bam. Just like that. And hey, I'm healed. I'm healed. I don't hurt no more. You know, praise God. So, you know, I, I it's just, it's an awesome life. In fact, I'll tell you what, folks, uh, it, this life is so exciting to me that in the middle of the night, I'll wake up and start thanking the Lord, you know, uh, what he's done for me. And, you know, like I always preach and teach, it's not how you start this race that counts. It's how you finish it. And uh, as long as you will grow and let the, let the Holy Spirit in you and, and, and grow, you're going to glow. I mean, you're going to be a, a, on the mountaintop. You know what I mean? But don't forget, you got to bring it all in people with you and bring them up to the mountaintop. And that's really what it's all about. And uh, like I say, I don't, I haven't been to no school or whatever. I've had a school of Knox, that's for sure. But the, the Bible and the Holy Spirit is, is and I want to share one scripture uh, with you if I can. And uh, it's uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 23. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. Nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. Ain't that what Christ did? We're supposed to emulate him. So, you know, we need to pick our brothers and sisters up. And if we're, if we're picking them up, the Lord's picking us up as well. And for a long time, man, all I did was, I, Lord, here I am. Bless me, Lord. Show me the way. Well, he can't show me the way, me sitting there putting my imprint on the chair or the, the pew. Uh, and he said in his word, he says, you know, you got to take steps forward to me and you continue to walk and he will guide those steps because he's wanting to bless you. So, uh, I mean, it's exciting. And I'm a simple man with a simple message. But you know what? The disciples were simple people, too. They, you know, they, they didn't go to college, did they? I didn't think they had college back in them days, did they? So you know what? He's using simple people. And praise God, folks, I'm telling you, these are the last days. And they may be our last days. You know, we're one heartbeat away from where we're going. So my heart's desire for you is to grab all of this anointing that you possibly can and use it. And you know what? It'll change your whole life. And like I say, I'm 78 and I'm excited about life and I want to give this away just as much as I possibly can and make a dent for Christ because that's what it's all about. And uh, it's not about me, 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 no more. And it hadn't been for some time. It's about you and him. That's the reason I'm here. And, you know, I don't go to church anymore for me. I go so I can help others and others and others. And then wherever I go, get a haircut or whatever, I'm on them. I'm telling you what, <laughs> you know, uh, praise God. Uh, I got a, a little book here. For a long time, long time, I, you know, I just pray for people and, you know, praise God, they're, they're healed and leave. I don't even know them, never see them again. But uh, somebody told me, Don, you need to put this down a little bit. And so, you know, you can reflect on it and other people can see in black and white. I said, yeah, you're right. I never thought of it. Well, this little book right here uh, has got 70 pages in it. And it, it tells a lot about how I received and some of the people that came along with me on this. And, uh, I, you know, in the back side of it, uh, it's uh, the, the incident. They're all testimonies. But this is just some of the people that are involved in this ministry. And I'm going to say there's probably 50 different people involved in this ministry with me. Uh, and they're all over uh, the eastern side of the, of the country. And, you know, they're going at it, man. And I'm telling you, the gospel train is moving today and like never before. And uh, people are receiving this anointing just bam, just like that. And if you're hungry, you're going to get fed. That's what the Bible says. And I believe that with all my heart. Now, what I've done is I brought two people uh, that uh, receive this anointing on Zoom. Okay? And uh, I'll tell you what. 
Dr. Uh, uh, Phil <coughs> Goldfeder. I believe he lives in North Carolina. He's a retired neurosurgeon. He's 84 years old. <coughs> and this guy is excited about the Lord. And he's going to tell you how he received and what he did. And if this don't set you on fire, kids, nothing will. Go ahead. Can you, can you tell them? Hello? You're going to have to hit your uh, unmute button. Unmute, uh, Bill. Is that better? Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, Bill, yeah. go ahead and tell them how you, how you receive this anointing. Thanks. Thanks for this phenomenal opportunity, Don, to offer to the ladies and gentlemen here this godly blessing to become a disciple of Jesus. I had 12 years of basic medical training and then spent the remainder of the 70 more, 71 years as a practicing neurosurgeon. Early in my career, I developed plantar fasciitis in my feet. My medical colleagues informed me it was incurable. And after three long years of chronic pain, I decided to visit a pastor. My greatest challenge was operating without pain medicine. My mom was raised Orthodox Jew, and she told me if I decided to become a Christian, please don't tell me. There were hundreds of people in the service, and Pastor Benny Hinn initially had the choir sing, and then they prayed in tongues. I felt heat and pressure in my feet, but when they stopped praying, <laughs> so did the pain. I jumped up crying. They told me that was Jesus, but I didn't believe them because I didn't see him, and we were both Jewish. Then I realized I could get more people healed praying for them than by using the scalpel. I was forced to ignore the medical aspects that didn't fit in. However, I did learn to use the words in the medical textbooks to minister to more challenging situations, but utilize the spirit as well. Learning supernatural or spiritual principles seemed so contradictory to the natural or secular world, but I made a major decision, quote, to fire, to refire rather than, than retire as a Jewish Christian neurosurgical healing evangelist, unquote. I actually felt like I was addicted to witnessing people instantly healed. For example, herniated discs, brain tumors, infections, trauma, fractures, all over the telephone. If you don't realize it as yet, we were meant to be here in these end days. We can't have people unhealed lying around with sickness and disease, mm -hmm. especially if they don't believe in Jesus, hell, the devil, or eternity. When I went to my doctor, I was always worse off when I came out emotionally than when I went in. There are still so many negative reports from them that people don't know how to handle their diagnosis because they get depressed. I don't believe in the word diagnosis because when Jesus went to the cross, 2,000 years ago, he took all of our sickness and diseases. That was difficult for me to believe until I was taught that a diagnosis is a curse and we have authority in Jesus to ignore whatever the medical label has been placed on us. He said in 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes you are healed. The good news is that there are so many spiritually educated people here in this meeting that not only want to help you, but will definitely assist you achieve your goal, regardless of your beliefs or current attitude. My favorite explanation of what you can accomplish is when you ignore Hosea 4, 6. It says, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. I believe this is why we're here. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing all of us. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for living in us when we get born again and receive salvation. I now totally understand how Jesus functioned with you, Holy Spirit. I heard a great definition of the Holy Spirit. He is really Jesus without boundaries or limitations. And thank you, Don. Amen. Praise God. Well, I remember praying for you uh, for the double portion of healing on the phone. Or excuse me, on Zoom. Isn't that right? Yes, and sir. You had your hands up and you were thanking the Lord. And then uh, 
man, I thought you're going to fall out of the chair. And get, <laughs> tell them what happened after that with the three people immediately after that, and then the dog. Hello? Yeah, you want me to tell you about the healing? Yeah, well, sure. That's how you picked it up and what you did with it. Yeah, um, a lady called me. I had prayed for her in the past for her horse, and she had a dog that had uh, hip dysplasia, uh, 13 years old. Her parents wanted her to keep the dog alive, but she wanted to put him to sleep. And she had a five pound Maggie that had constant itching or what we call pruritus. So I prayed for everybody. And then I told her to send me pictures. I love to see pictures of dogs walking around. That blows my mind. And then she sent me a picture of Maggie and she had no pruritus and she was totally healed of the headaches that she was suffering and she was like a different person you know, this is, it's always amazing because we never had that opportunity in medical school <laughs> my doctor friends never believed it anyway yeah nice. yeah and then you had two more healings uh, after after we prayed for you uh in the next three days wasn't it yes yeah. Praise God. Well, you know what? This man is 84 years old. Science took him for uh, about 60 years, but you know what? He finally stepped up and said, "You know what? I'm going to I'm going to grab a hold of this." And he did. And I'm excited for him because I'm telling you what, um, uh, he's praying for people and they're being healed. So that's exciting. Now I've got another gentleman that uh, uh, named Gary Anderson. He lives uh, probably 150 miles from me. He goes with me everywhere I go. Uh, Gary Anderson is a retired uh, engineer, uh, mechanical engineer, and he got healed of, of a cancer. Uh, and Gary, are you there? Hello, Gary. Yeah. Gary, are you there? Well, I guess he's not. There. Yeah, I'm here, Don. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Would you give your your short testimony? Well, I'd be glad to. Uh, as Don said, uh, I've uh, been in engineering and and uh, you know in uh, science, the world seeing is believing. Uh, in the uh, world of faith, believing is seeing. This this thing of faith uh, was a real challenge for me. But uh, I met the Lord at uh, age 32, and I'm 78 now, just a little month or two behind Don. Uh, I've been praising the Lord for most of my life. Been involved in uh, meetings and, and situations where I prayed for others, but God's blessed me with health. I've never had any need for any particular uh, prayer uh, or such in terms of healing. But it was about five years ago that uh, my son noticed a spot on my ear and my daughter encouraged me to go have it checked. And so I did. And uh, they called back after they did a biopsy and said that I had cancer, melanoma. Uh, when my daughter heard about that, she was really frightened. She said, Dad, you got to go get that taken care of. Well, they wanted me to come to the cancer hospital and they were going to cut away part of my ear and uh, do chemo and radiation and uh, uh, reconstructive plastic surgery and, and the whole thing and at that time I was about 73 and I just felt like you know Lord uh, I've seen you heal and I've never had to ask for healing for myself but I'm just not going to go through this surgery and all that I'm believing for you to heal me and uh, it was not many days after I made that decision that a friend of mine mentioned uh, about this guy named Don Ware. And he was from a Baptist background. And they weren't real sure about all this uh, healing stuff. And he was a good friend though. And he said, why don't you go check him out? So I called Don on the phone and he said, sure, come on up. So he was up at the city at the time, Kansas City, and drove up there. We met, shook hands, told him what I needed prayer for. He prayed for me. I thanked him, went home. Well, that wasn't any major uh, supernatural event. It was just uh, did what did what I felt like I needed to do. But uh, I uh, I was real concerned about you know maybe maybe this is my time to check out. My daughter again said that a friend of hers had been diagnosed with melanoma just recently, and 
he didn't get treatment and within 10 weeks he was dead. So I guess it can be a pretty aggressive cancer. So uh, I didn't know, but I, I just was believing. So I felt like, excuse me, <clears throat> I felt like I needed to go visit my brothers. I got three brothers, one out in Arizona, one in Denver and one in St. Louis. I just wanted to tell them I love them and I didn't say anything about, uh, about the melanoma, but I just wanted to make sure I saw them and told them uh, Jesus is Lord. And so, but a strange thing happened. I mentioned about faith. Uh, God began to speak to me about faith and, and what he gave me was the story of uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the book of Daniel. And the king wanted them to worship his idol and they said, no, sir, we're not going to. Uh, and the king says, well, we're going to throw you in the furnace of fire if you don't. They said, well, uh, king, our God is able to deliver us. But even if he don't, we're still not going to worship your blankety blank idol. Uh, I added the adjectives there. Uh, anyway, uh, so you know the story. Well, uh, they came out the next day and not a scratch on them. Well, that kind of faith began to build in me. And I have to say, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. It's not something that I can manifest, but coming from an engineering and a science, seeing is believing background, this new concept of believing is seeing. As I began to believe and God increased my faith, I began to see God actually healing. And it was three months later and I had to go back for a follow-up visit that I had previously scheduled. Went back to the doctor, the cancer hospital, the cancer uh, uh, facility there. He checked me over and he said, well, I don't see any sign of melanoma. I said, thank you, doctor. I, I fully believe that that was the case. Praise God. And I shared with him what had happened. Well, I got to say that uh, it's, it's been a blessing ever since then. I, I felt like the Lord intentionally, purposely led me to Don. And so I just felt like I needed to follow along with him and see what's going. And I've been with him for about five years now and uh, uh, still checking him out. And I got to tell you, I believe his heart is right. He's got a team of people that uh, have also been encountered with him. And uh, his purpose is to glorify the Lord. He's not seeking any personal gain. And, and I respect a man like that. And uh, as God has enabled me to be of, of uh, assistance and encouragement to Don and to the other team members, I've been blessed to do that. So praise God. That's what, that's what Don and Jesus Christ did in my life. Yeah, well, tell about the, what was it, the second, the second time you went with me where the 25 people were healed, even, even the preacher? Tell, yeah. Tell that story. Now, this is the second time, right? Not already well, this is the second time Don invited me to go with him. They was ministering at a church uh, in Harrisonville, Missouri, and uh, they, uh, Don had several other members there, and I was pretty new at this with his team. Uh, I would share my testimony, but uh, then after that, Don invited people that had needs for healing, and his team members were there, and they were uh, praying for different ones, and uh, a friend of Don's named Greg, Ar Greg Osborne uh, approached me and said, Gary, uh, this lady here wants you to pray for her husband. He's critically ill in the hospital. And uh, she said she wants me to pray for him. I said, well, uh, Greg, let's, let's get her on up here with some of these others that know how to do that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm believing in healing, but actually to be a part of that myself, that that's kind of a new experience for me. Now bear in mind, I've been with the Lord over 40 years. Uh, this is not something that's new. But uh, she said, he, he said, no, she wants you. So, okay, so I went over there to her and uh, the, the thought just came to me, uh, pray for a handkerchief. Her husband, was, her husband was not there, he was in the hospital. And so I had this, this handkerchief here and it was not a fresh, clean handkerchief. It was a dirty old handkerchief. And uh, I just felt like the Lord says, pray for it. Lay your hands on it and her and have her take it home and wash it and then put it under her husband's pillow. Okay. So I, I shared with her. I said, this handkerchief is what we're going to pray over. So we laid the handkerchief down 
and we put our hands on the handkerchief, Greg and her and myself, and I took authority over that sickness and asked God to put his anointing on this handkerchief. And then I gave it to her and I said, take it home, wash it. The anointing is still there. Take it to your husband and put it under his pillow. Well, she apparently did that. Uh, I never thought much more about it since then. Well, it was about three weeks later and uh, Greg and I were with Don at another place. And Greg says, oh, by the way, you remember that, that lady that she prayed for her husband with a handkerchief? And I said, yeah. Well, she did what she said, took it home, washed it, took it to her husband, put it under his pillow. The next day, he got up and walked out of the hospital, totally healed. I said, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I was surprised myself. But uh, you see, this idea of seeing is, uh, believing is seeing is a whole new revelation to me. And I thank God for it. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I just want to say this one other thing. Ask yourself, God is healing because. Why is God healing because? He has a purpose for the healing. And with what's going on right now in our world, God is yet once more shaking the heavens and the earth. Hebrews 12, quoting the Old Testament. And God is ready to send forth his laborers, folks. That's us. To whom much is given, much is required. He's disciplining us for our lack of faith. He says, come on, believe, and watch and let me confirm what you share with signs following. As he told the disciples, he's telling us, folks, and in this time of harvest, and it really is a harvest, we've got to step forward. Here I am, Lord, send me. That's my story, Don. Praise God, beautiful story. You know, that's the second time that he was with us. And like I say, there was 25 people healed. I mean, just immediately right there. And uh, that's what the Lord is doing today. I mean, you know, that's a perfect plan that he's planned for us. And you know what? You just got to step out in faith and say, you know what? I'm going to not gonna be a fool for Christ. You know what I mean? I see people... Uh, well, I prayed for a woman today at the restaurant up in Belton, Missouri. I saw her limping. I said, Sis, you got a problem? I said, You're in pain, ain't you? Oh, yeah. I said, Well, I'd like to have the opportunity to pray for you. And right, right in the middle of the busy time. And I says, I can tell you one thing right now. The Lord will take that pain away from you. She says, Great. But bear with me just a minute. I've got people to take care of. I says, Well, okay. It'll take maybe two minutes. So anyway, I finished up my meal there, and I got done, put the handkerchief or the uh, paper into the plate, and, you know, I'm, I said, well, I'm going to get up. And uh, so she come wheeling around the corner, and uh, I prayed for her no more no more than two minutes. And then I had to go touch the wall. When she touched the wall, I could tell it was all gone. You know, I, re I can remember, remember Naaman, you know, he had to get in the, the dirty... Uh, uh, Jordan, and uh, he had to go down seven times, and he didn't want to do it because it was dirty. But he did, and he got healed. So, you know, that, that kind of triggered me, you know. Sometimes, I mean, I, I the Lord will imprint in my mind to do something like, uh, you know, go touch a light bulb or whatever, or go touch a doorknob, or hold on to that wall for just a minute, and your, your, your healing will be complete. And man, I'm going to tell you what, it works. And, and I do this right in the middle of a a service, you know what I mean? And sometimes they'll go put their hand on the on the wall and they can't get it off. I mean, you know, it, it's awesome. Uh, but, you know, unless you do it, you ain't going to experience it, you know? You need to, the Lord don't use your hands or feet, uh, body, he used your brain. He imprints right here in your brain and says, do this. And uh, most of the time we look at it and say, well, you know, that's illogical. I'm not, I'm not going to look like a fool. Well, you know, can you be a fool for Christ and, and let him get out there and, and, and you know, do the wonder, wonderful things? Uh, wow, can you believe I got 5% left on the battery? <laughs> wow. Well, anyway, uh, talk about an exciting life. I, I want to get right down and, and, and pray. Can somebody take this over so I can go ahead and, and uh, Gary, you there? Yeah.
Yeah, well, uh, I'm going to go get the battery charger, okay? And hook it up to this because I want to pray for these people, all right? Okay. Well, well done uh, doing that. Uh, I would like to share uh, what God is really showing me about what his purpose is. And, and that is ultimately, if you look in the, in the book of Revelation, at the very end, what is God the Father's desire? His desire is to create a new heaven and a new earth. And God the Father wants to come and dwell with his sons and daughters in the new earth eternally. Now, before that happens, when the Lord Jesus comes, we're going to spend a thousand years on this earth and God has resurrected all those who have, have uh, uh, accepted him, and who knows who else, okay? But at the end of that thousand years, it's going to be, uh, the devil's going to be let out, and there's going to be a chaos. There's going to be judgment. But that goal that our Father in heaven has, most of us are probably moms and dads, or grandpas and grandmas, or great-grandpas and great-grandmas. But you know, what a joy it is when our sons and daughters love one another. And, and I got to tell you, recently, one of my sons has had cancer in, a, in his uh, body, and it developed to where he needed a transplant. And my other son stepped forward and offered to be a donor and shared part of his liver to my son who was in need. I got to tell you, God is a God of healing. In this case, he used the, uh, the medical procedure, and I'm okay with that. But I got to tell you, it blesses a father when he sees his sons love one another. And isn't that what Jesus told us? He says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so that's, the God, that's God's goal. Whatever the circumstances are, remember, he has to learn how to love. And I got to say, when I fell in love with my wife. I just thought, man, this is great. Well, we've been together 58 years now, and I'm learning she's uh, uh, got a lot to offer that I never saw before. And what's happening now is because of Jesus in my life and the Holy Spirit, I'm learning to love her the way God defines love, not the way I thought love was. It's mm -hmm. not what I find attractive. It's about how I can be the husband that God wants her to have. And I thank God for her every day. Go ahead, Don. All right. Well, I got it plugged in now. It's lighting back up, so we're okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, I just want, I want to give away everything that's in, around, and about me that, of the Spirit. To whosoever believes in Him shall do these things. And I don't know how many of you are out there. It doesn't matter. One thing you got to realize God is, I mean, he's everywhere at once. I mean, you know, you go to the toilet, he's still there. You can't go no place where he ain't. And once you realize that, he can work miracles. But I, you know, I used to think, well, you know, when I'm, I'm here or there, you know, I'm under a rough, you know, uh, trying to put logic to this. No, no, it's all illogical. And, you know, we got to get out of the logic way and get into the supernatural. And the only way we can do that is, of course, through him. And when, when he gives you an imprint in your mind says, do this, do it. Don't question it. And uh, you shall be blessed and the people around you be going to be blessed. And uh, I'm excited that, you know, I, I listen to him. Um, uh, I, you know, you just you got to realize that, hey, I don't know how old you are. It don't make no difference. Uh, I've seen 95-year-old people grab a hold of this uh, anointing. I've seen six years old uh, grab a hold of this anointing. And I've got so bold, and you got to be bold in this, you know. Sometimes in the service, I'll point at somebody in the back or whatever and have them stand up, and, and they got a demon or whatever, and they're delivered right there. And you know what? It's not me. I mean, it's the Holy Spirit working through me. And, you know, almost all the service, almost all the service we do, there's one or two people in there that you would never believe that got demons in them. And, uh, you know, the Lord delivers them right through, through you. But it's not you that's doing it. It's the power of God through you that does it all. 
because I prayed for a lot of people before I received this anointing, and man, it didn't make no difference, man. You know, okay. But, you know, once this anointing, I'm telling you what, you just touch them, bam! I mean, all of a sudden, they fall down, and they start puking and going on and fighting and so forth. And uh, just within seconds, you know, they got to leave. You command them in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's another thing I want to share with you. You cannot pray a disease out of a person. You cannot pray a hurt out of a person. You got to command it in the name of Jesus Christ. He give it to us in his word. You know, he said, pick up your mat and go. Or sin no more. You know, uh, it's just, it's so simple. I've been called down and they say, who are you to demand? I said, well, the Lord give us the authorized authority to use his name and i'm using it right now and uh, so you know that's that's the answer to all of it right there because it's his power that does it and, and my heart's desire is that all of you that really really want to grab hold of this you can grab hold of it tonight in fact some of you some of you right now hopefully are starting to feel something inside of you that's just you know man i'm telling you you just don't understand it but it feels good because it's the anointing of jesus christ through the holy spirit that's inside of you right now changing your furniture around the way he wants it not the way you have it because he wants to use you now i can only see three of you right now and one of you already received this anointing so there's literally many more out there now, I'm going to ask you to do something, and we're going to pray. I want you to put your hands up in the air, okay? And when you put your hands up in the air, what you're saying, you're signifying that, Lord, yes, I believe, and here I am. I, I want to receive this anointing, and I, I, want to be, I want to do what you want me to do, Lord. And please, right now, you know, just, I mean, put that hand up, and you're going to, you're going to feel an intense situation in your body. If you really, really, really want to receive the maximum from him, the fullness of him. So are you ready? You got them hands up? Praise God. Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, I just lift them up to you right now. Lord, you can see their hands and you can see their hearts. Father, right now, the anointing that's in around about me right now, I transfer it to them right now in the name of Jesus. That Lord God, that they will speak the the healing virtues to people, and they will be instantly healed, Father. The Lord God, you are who you say you are, and you do what you say you're going to do. So, Lord, right now, right now, impose on their body, Father, and what they really, really want. Right now, let that. Thank you, Jesus. Now, fill them, Lord. Fill them. Right now, right now. Let that healing anointing flow to each one. Right now, the same feeling it's inside of me, Father, I transfer it to them. In Jesus' name, we declare it done right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, right now, this is going to be a, a mini camp of people. The plans, Lord, that your perfect plan is in each and every one of these people right now. So, Father, fill them up right now, right now. Father, let them be bold. Let them be that person, Lord, that walk up to somebody they don't even know, that they know they got a problem, and order in the name of Jesus Christ that these things be gone out of them. Now! Not tomorrow, not next week, but now, right now. You are a now God. You can't heal in the past because the past is gone. You can't heal two months ago because it's gone. But you are a now God. So right now, fill him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Put your arms around him right now, Lord. Let him fill. Let him sense. Wow. Wow. Right now. Give him a wow factor, Father, right now. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, let him never be the same, Father. They've been exposed right now to you in the fullness. So, Lord, give them that total boldness, Lord, to speak out your word. Mm -hmm. And not only speak it out, but act upon it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
For Lord, you're not a respecter of persons, but you love us all. And you don't say in the Bible, in your word, Lord, that the priest is the only one who can have this. In fact, it's whosoever believeth in him shall do these things. So praise God, praise God, praise God. Now fill them up, head to toe, Lord. Let that, oh my gosh, let, let that just absolutely permeate you right now in the fullness of, of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I know you're there and you're here. And Lord, load them up with, with all that, that you want them to have, Father. And give them what they need right now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I praise and I worship you and glorify your wonderful name. Because there's none like you. Never, never been anything like you. And I can tell right now that there's something going on inside of people right now that's on this program. And that healing virtue, I don't care if what's wrong with you, if you've got any kind of pain, in the name of Jesus, that pain has to come out. And whatever else is in that body, Father, that's not of you, we declare it, decree it, be gone. Now, right now, there'll be no more pain. And whatever's causing that pain, Father, we loose you right now and do whatever's necessary to take care of that. Now, I know, in a shadow of a doubt, Right now, in the name of Christ, there's people being healed right now, long receiving this right now. Oh, see, he is come out so no toy for the Right now, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Right now. Fill them up, Lord. Fill them up. Give them a good night's sleep tonight, Lord. Let them wake up in the morning rejuvenated, Father, in you. And Lord, let them be in the perfect plan for you. And you shall be glorified in everything that they do. And Lord, that's what we want right now, to be glorified for you, Lord, in, in the Father. The Father look down at your son and at Jesus and say, Jesus, I am so proud of you. Look what you did with your children. And one day we're going to be with the God himself. And I'm excited about that. So praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. All right. Praise God. Man. Can can you guys can you can you feel something going on inside? I mean, you know, it's something special. Hey, I've seen bald headed people grow hair. You know what I mean? That's I have. And and the pastor called me and said he's got he's got the hair, but he says that it's green, it's yellow. <laughs> It's all different colors. Well, we didn't signify what color to make it. But, man, I, I, just, I just want to share a story with you before we leave because to show you. This nurse brought five different people to my office there in Belton. Five different people. The Lord healed every one of them, okay? She called me, and she says, Don, I want you to go to this house over in Olathe. I'm going to get a bunch of people together, and uh, I, I want you to... Uh, uh, come and pray for him. I said, absolutely. So uh, she met, she set it up, and I took uh, people with me, uh, uh, Sue Flowers, which she's been singing for me for 15 years, and, uh, and one other person. And uh, we went out there and went in a big, beautiful, I mean, big, beautiful house. Matter of fact, the staircase on it, you know how they're normally... Uh, you know, four foot. This thing was, you know, six, eight feet. The staircase going up. I mean, it, it was a mansion. And we went in there and looking around. And the front room is gigantic. There's 37 people in there. <clears throat> and and on the fireplace, there are people sitting. And I mean, they're all over. And some sitting in the kitchen. It's open, open bean field situation. And this nurse got up and she shared uh, what she had seen. And uh, that's the reason she set this up. Well, I'm looking around while she's talking, and I'm seeing people there that are Catholic, uh, Baptist, uh, people that don't know what to believe, you know? And uh, anyway, uh, she turned it over to me, and I was sharing with them that I'm seeing people heal on the telephone. That, you know, it's just, it's just an awesome deal. And this man walked up to me, and he had a lesion hanging out of his neck. And it, I mean, it was out, way out, pushed out, and it was leaking. He had a hanky on there. 
it was leaking. And he, and he says, I have, uh, I forget what kind of cancer it was, but it was eating his tongue up. And uh, he couldn't hardly swallow. And this guy is named Paul Kaufman. And he was seven years with the Packers. He was a uh, split in or whatever uh, with the Packers for seven years, and two years with the Chiefs. I have no idea who he was. But anyway, uh, I asked him, I says, uh, what have you got there? And he said, well, I got cancer and, and I can't, I can't hardly it's eat my tongue. And, uh, I, you know, I, I believe the Lord's going to heal me. And I said, well, I know he is. You know, you came here with faith. So I, uh, I prayed for him and bam, he hit the deck. Well, he got up, went back and sat on the fireplace. And uh, this one guy got, got excited and he said, uh, I've got a niece that's dying right now in the hospital. She's checking out, her body's shutting down. She's 11 years old. Uh, would you pray for her on the phone? I said, absolutely, I, I would. And uh, I said, get somebody on the phone. Well, he said, the family there is saying goodbye. And I said, well, that, 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 she's not going nowhere. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm praying for others and directly he come back with the phone. He says, I got, I got somebody here. And uh, I, I, so I talked to him. I said, well, can you lay hands on her? He says, I sure can. He laid hands on her. And I guess she had pipes and her, her hoses sticking in her and everything else. And she was comatose, of course. And uh, anyway, I began to pray. And I'm telling you, folks, I didn't pray three minutes. Not three minutes. I rebuked it in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, I politely got off the phone. And uh, you know, we uh, we left. There were several other healings there also. I mean, everybody that stepped up front got a healing. So I left. The nurse called me and said, you know that guy that you prayed for with a cancer? I said, well, yeah, I, I remember him. He said, well, you know who he is? I said, well, no. That's Paul Kaufman. I said, well, that's wonderful. He said, well, he's a, he's a star. He's a, a football player. And he'd been playing football for over 10 years uh, professionally. And anyway, uh, he don't have even a scar. I mean, it's all gone. I mean, the cancer is completely obliterated. And while he w got back up on the fireplace there, that thing was going down then. Okay? So this is three days later. Now the, the best part of this is that little girl that was 11 years old, I'm telling you, she got, left the hospital on one medication the next morning. And that wasn't the end of the story. Uh, that was her father, which was a, uh, which was a doctor <laughs> that laid hands on her. Okay. Well, I got a phone call about a month later and, uh, this man called me and says, I need to come talk to you. I said, well, I'm used to that. Sure. Come. I said, well, how about 10? Well, I can't do it 10, but I can do it three or four. I said, well, pick a time. So he says, I'll be, uh, how about four? And again, I don't have any idea who it is. And uh, he walked into my place at four o'clock sharp. And I looked at him, I says, you're a doctor. Yeah, how'd you know? I said, well, I didn't, but I, I'm sure the Holy Spirit did. I said, come on in. So I took him in my little old closet office. And uh, that's where 3,000 people was healed in that little closet office. <laughs> and anyway, he, uh, he said, I'm not, I'm not the, the father, but he says, I know the case well because he's a real good friend of mine. And uh, I, I wanted to meet the man that prayed for her because this just don't happen. And uh, I said, well, you, you meet him. He's right there. Christ paid the price some time ago, and all he did is use me, and uh, I just worked for him. And anyway, he said, well, I'm going to tell you what's happened. He says, I belong to a group, uh, and there's 50 doctors out there on the Kansas side, the biggest uh, clinic out there. And, and he said, uh, um, we all knew about this situation, what the Lord had done. And we got three doctors now that are praying for their patients. And he said that 
and told me, he said, you know, if, if we get, we can get serious trouble praying for people, uh, spiritually speaking, uh, we could, our license could be revoked. And I said, wow, I didn't know that. He said, well, yeah, but he said, we're doing it anyway. And anyway, so the three doctors are doing it. And praise God, see how this splatters out and just continues to go. But it's got to start somewhere. It's like a forest fire, you know? It don't start off with 500 acres burning. It starts off with just, you know, one ignite, one thing happening. And this, believe me, folks, these are the last days. If you don't believe that, look around you and see what's going on uh, in, in our government and, and the world. You know, most of everything you see on CBN, ABC, and all that is not always the truth. This is the truth right here. This is the only truth that you're ever going to get. So this is what we need to rely on. And uh, I, like I say, I'm excited about life. Uh, I get up in the middle of the night and I'm, I'm excited, you know. What do you got for me today, Lord? And if y'all can get into the same train of thought that I'm in, your life will be full. Because what, what happens, your, your plan, uh, his plan is your plan. And you fall in line with what he wants to do. And I'm going to tell you what. It, the, the joy just gushes out of you, totally gushes out of you. And man, that, I, I, I'm, living, I'm living a life right now that I'm, I'm excited about life, I'm telling you. Now, show me a 78-year-old that's excited about life. You know, there's not too many of them out there. And if he took me home today, praise God, I still win, you know. But he's, he put me here for a purpose. And I kind of feel like uh, I'm a Johnny Appleseed with the Holy Spirit, you know, everywhere I go, everywhere I go. You know what? That's what I do. And uh, from that, a lot more trees are going to come about. You know what I mean? A lot more uh, people are going to grab a hold of more and be more of, of what the Lord wants them to be. And takes a lot of, it, this also takes, once you receive this anointing, you know, you don't vacillate back and forth as much from the spirit to the flesh, if that makes sense to you. You know, it's much easier, much easier walk when you walk in the fullness rather than, you know, today, I, well, I did this and shouldn't have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you just don't do it no more, you know? And you don't even want to do it no more. You just want to do what's right. And people, we moved down here in this little community and there's several people I've led to the Lord, a few people being healed down here. And, you know, this, this area down here, I've been to about eight churches. None of them are interested in this. And you know what? It's okay. I love them and go on. And, and pray for people everywhere I meet. And that's, that's, that's where the ministry is. Uh, a lot of these churches are just not going to grab a hold of this. They got control. They got pride. You know what I mean? And uh, that's okay. You know, let them do what they need to do. But I'm, I'm going like, to grab a hold of anybody I can. And give them the best that I know how. And uh, I'm excited for you guys. And some of you guys are going to absolutely get up and run. I mean, get up and run. Because you can feel something inside of you. And you need to grab a hold of this and run with it with the boldness. Don't go to sleep with it, okay? In other words, I mean, get out here today and start praying for people. And then if you find somebody out there that, that uh, uh, Holy Ghost filled, man, right there. Grab a hold of him and say, do you want to receive this anointing? And pray the anointing on right there. Thank you, brother. And to do the same thing. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Thanks, son. Well, I think I probably did the devil all the damage I can do today. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, I just, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, the results of this because I'm telling you, <laughs> God is great. Amen. Hey, Don. Don. Yeah. I'm a, I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't if you wouldn't mind uh, praying for uh, a little out of the box type of prayer here. My daughter yeah. and her family uh, slept on top of the, they slept on the highest point of their hill just outside of Portland, Oregon, because the yeah. fires are coming in. 
I, oh. I would like for you to pray. Would you would you pray for a healing of the land, and if nothing else, so that my daughter will know that it was God who di who did it. There's hundreds of fires going on. Yes, you know, yes. Again, Washington, you know, California, hundreds of fires, and my daughter's on 18 acres of land. They spent the last night huddled on top of their hill with the wind, with the wind blowing and cried all night long. And they called me just to, just before I came on the program here. Would, would you pray that God heal our land? Oh, absolutely. Our people. Bring some rain. We'd like some here in Arizona too, by the way, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Father, you heard the situation. You heard what it is. Lord, I right now, I rebuke all of these fires that are out there right now. And Lord, some way, somehow, supernaturally, you're able to take care of it. So, Father, right now, bring on the rain. Bring on strong rain, Father. Yes, Lord Jesus. With all my heart, Lord, that you're more than able to take care of your people. So, yes. Father, right now, we lose this anointing, that direction, right now. And we know that it's going to happen because, Father, you are who you say you are, and you do what you say you're going to do. Oh. Oh. Devil, you're going to have to get off of it because this ain't going to happen no more. Yes. Stand against Jesus. you with the power of God that's in us right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Christ's name. Hallelujah. And, Father, I also lift up this government right now. Mm. Yeah. Father, mm. I don't even have to mention names, Lord. You know them. You know what's wrong, and you know who's wrong. Oh, so Father, oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, bring us back to the sanity of, of Jesus Christ being back in our schools, yeah. Yeah. back mm -hmm. in our government, and, and yes. put the love and right back into it, Father. And all these are against it, Lord. Do what you need to, Father, right now. Now, you said lift up your enemy. Well, we lift them up to you right now, Father. Do whatever you need to do to bring them down to the saving knowledge for you. Yes, your that's it. That's and it. you're able to do it, Lord. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, man. Let it be done. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, tomorrow Hello. night, uh, I'm doing a Facebook, and I'm going to put it on Facebook. Uh, we're doing a full gospel. They're in a little town of Raymore. So I'm going to tape the whole thing and put it on Facebook. So if anybody wants to see what's happening there, uh, usually there's people. The last time we did it, the, a woman, uh, I don't know how old she was, probably 23, 24. She came all the way from the other side of the town, which is probably 35 miles. Game late. Her and another girl. Eight o'clock is when the restaurant closed, but they let her in. And we were all done with the service. Are you with me? And anyway, uh, she came and, and she says, look, please pray for me. I got problems. And uh, she says, I got acne real bad. She says, I got back problems, stomach problems, and I hate these thick glasses. And I said, absolutely. We prayed for her. And all of the pain was gone out of her belly and out of her back and uh, stopped. And she says, oh, my God. Oh, my God. My eyes are burning. She took her glasses <laughs> off and she could see 2020. So she don't need glasses no more. Oh, so, you know, Thanks, God. God. She was never Thank late. You, Isn't that awesome? Yes. But this Man. is stuff that we see and. And uh, we, we see this stuff going on in, in the full gospel. And, uh, you know, I got, like I say, at least two more uh, chapters that are going to be coming up. And I'm going down and get them started. And I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm excited about doing that. Praise God. <laughs> so anyway, I, as I said before, I think I've done all the damage I can do now. All right, Don. Thank you so much for bringing your... Uh ministry to our zoom call we thank you uh each person i see people from Ooh. china from uh, australia from all over the america yes. and uh, yes. we want to bless you father bless each person here heal, heal them father let them have the anointing the boldness father to do what you want us want them to do i thank you father for this chapter drawing this chapter let our lights 
shine and change the world. We pray yeah. in Jesus' name. Praise Thank God. You. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you next Bless week. You. Thank you, Don. God bless you, George. God bless you, Bob. God bless you, Bob. Linda, Gerlindy. Hey, Don, Gary, how are you from Houston? Blessings, brothers. Oh, God bless you. Bless you, George. God bless you, Richard. Hey, Bob. Hi. Thank you, Larry. Good night. Good night. Larry, good to see you. Praise God for you. When I grow up, I want to be just like Don. <laughs> oh, that's it. Simple Thank child. You, like me. Thank you, Don. Just do it. Just Thank do you it. For the fire. This is my favorite one so far, Tim. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Bye. Good night, Tim. everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Tim. Tim. While you're still on, could you just pray for my friend, Phil? I'll be visiting him and others in hospital this afternoon. He is 71. Isn't it exciting? Amen. When you turn the Lord loose and let him do what he wants to in the mind, if he gets your mind, he's got the rest of you. And that we got to understand that, you know what? He wants to use us for his glory. Yes. And mm -hmm. lift us up. Above, 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 and more above. Mm -hmm. well, praise God. Amen. As I say, I'm I'm a 78 year old excited guy. You know, mm -hmm. I've been married 58 <laughs> years to the same lady, and life oh. can't get no better, folks. <laughs> you know, so, uh, uh, brother, you're you're a real blessing, and we uh, we 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 thank you for coming on, and your friends and. And feel free to join our uh, our meetings sometime, anytime. I will. I will. And I won't forget. I'll leave, the next one, I'll certainly be there. And not right. at 6 o'clock at 7.45, right? <laughs> That's right. All right, brother, brother and sisters, God bless you. God bless Bye -bye. you. Bye. 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 Love you guys.